A major earthquake shook the Caribbean nation of Haiti late today. It hit just 14 miles in the capital city, Port-au-Prince. The earthquake struck the island of Hispaniola, with the country of Haiti being the most affected, having a third of the country destroyed. The epicenter is located near the city of Leogane, which has the most severe damage that destroyed 80% of the city. Approximately 25 kilometers northeast of the epicenter is the capital of Haiti, the metropolitan Port au Prince, which is also severely damaged. That includes the cities of Carrefour. Petionville, Delmas, Tabare, Site Soleil, and Kanskov. The earthquake also reached a small part of the southwest of Dominican Republic. The earthquake occurred at 4.53 in the afternoon of January 12, 2010, with a magnitude of 7 on the West Indian island of Hispaniola, comprising the countries of Haiti the Dominican Republic. Most severely affected was Haiti occupying the western third of the island. The tremor was felt as far away as Cuba and Venezuela, but the epicenter of the seven-magnitude quake was just 16 miles away from Port-au-Prince. The earthquake only lasted for about 35 seconds but was soon followed by two aftershocks of magnitudes 5.9 and 5.5. It was followed by at least 52 aftershocks measuring 4.5 or greater until the 24th of January of the same year. It is said that Haiti, the country where the earthquake took place, was one of the poorest countries in the west side of the globe, with 80% of its population living in poverty at that time. The country had experienced earthquakes before being the 1842 Cap Haitian earthquake as the strongest with an estimated magnitude of 8.1. Haiti has recorded seismic activity before the 2010 Haiti earthquake. The devastating earthquake was recorded during 1751, 1770, 1842, and 1946 in Haiti. The effects were catastrophic. All of the capital's hospitals, as well as three facilities run by doctors without borders, sustained serious damage as did Port-au-Prince airport and its seaport, which was rendered inoperable. Telecom services were greatly affected, major roads were rendered impassable and close to 300,000 buildings, most of which were residences, were damaged beyond repair. In the case of the Haiti quake, the Caribbean and North American plates slide past one another in an east-west direction. This is known as a strike-slip boundary. Stress builds up in points along the boundary in the long its faults where parts of the crust stick. Eventually, that stress is released in a sudden, strong movement that causes the two sides of the fault to move and generate an earthquake. These plates constantly slip each other about 0.8 inches a year with the North American plate moving westward with respect to the Caribbean plate and is called the Enriquillo Plantain Garden Fault Zone. The number of deaths are ranging from 220,000 to 300,000 and roughly 1.5 million were injured. Displaced people remain as of September 2017 was 3,978. Nearly 4,000 schools were damaged or destroyed. At the time of the quake, 70% of the population lived below the poverty line. There is still a long way to go. One of the more than 2 million affected survivors, approximately 200,000, are still homeless, according to the Internal Organization for Migration. 3 million people were affected and almost half of it were forced to live in makeshift internally displaced person camps because their houses collapsed. 
30,000 commercial buildings collapsed and the business were destroyed including 3,978 schools. The roads, seaports, and airports were also damaged. It is estimated that 60% of the nation's administrative and economic infrastructure was lost, and 80% of the schools and more than 50% of the hospitals were destroyed or damaged. More than 180 government buildings and 13 out of 15 key government offices collapsed, including the Presidential Palace and Parliament. Some of the issues Haiti faced prior to the earthquake persist today, including weak political governance, lack of infrastructure, and limited access to basic resources. Haiti ranks among the world's least developed countries because of political, social, and environmental insecurity. Overall losses and damages from the earthquake are estimated to be between 7 billion US dollars and 14 billion US dollars, making this the most costly earthquake event in terms of the percentage of a country's gross domestic product. Neighboring Dominican Republic provided emergency water and medical supplies as well as heavy machinery to help with search and rescue underneath the rubble but most people were left to dig through the rubble by hand. Emergency rescue teams arrived from a number of countries, such as Iceland. Medical teams began treating the injured. Temporary field hospitals were set up by organizations like the International Committee of the Red Cross. GIS was used to provide satellite images and maps of the area to assist aid organizations. People from around the world watched the news from Haiti on TV and through social networks. Many pledged money over their mobile phones. United Nations troops and police were sent to help distribute aid and keep order. Money was pledged by organizations and governments to assist in rebuilding, but only slow progress had been made after one year. The World Vision has also provided support to the country. From 2010 to 2015, as a result of World Vision's work, 2 million people received food aid. More than 200,000 people received emergency shelter. 250 students participated in school feeding programs in more than 800 schools. 300,000 people benefited from cholera treatment and prevention programs. 90,000 displaced people in camps received potable water for close to 24 months. 19,000 farmers were trained in better agriculture techniques to increase crop yields. 10 schools were constructed. 30 child-friendly spaces served nearly 8,000 children. When you say an earthquake, the first thing will come to your mind is shaking of the ground or a scary scene. The first reaction will be negative. Everyone will be sad, saying that the people involved are not so lucky. An earthquake is a dangerous calamity, so everyone should prepare for it. Everyone should always be ready. It's pretty normal for people like them to feel trauma because of what had happened. It's so hard for them, I think, based on the situation that they had experienced before. I felt very sad for what had happened to them. It's not easy to recover after an earthquake that causes extreme loss of life damaged infrastructure as well as trauma. For me, the best way to do is to not panic and prepare yourself. I can say that all of the thoughts that are running through their minds are why us, why now, and why are we the unluckiest people on earth? I felt bad for them. The fact that they are one of the poorest countries that time, it would be hard for them and would took so long before they fully recovered from what had happened.